Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes. This is a Grocco Classic Ride 50 child seat, and this is a 2015 Acura MDX, which means it is time for our weekly child review segment. Now the MDX is a large seven seat luxury crossover, and it competes with the likes of the BMW X5, as well as the Infiniti QX60. Also included in the competition list for the MDX would be something like the Mercedes-Benz ML, the Audi Q7, even something like a Buick Enclave, and at the lower end of the segment, perhaps a Toyota Highlander. Now the Highlander is relatively similarly sized to the MDX, however it is a decent amount cheaper, unless you get the hybrid model of course, that hybrid model does end up just about the same price as a starting MDX. From the side profile it's obvious that the MDX is a three row SUV because we have this relatively tall roof line that continues almost all the way to the back end rather than a drastically sloping roof line like you find in something like a Lexus RX. We have this large rear door which does make getting in and out of the vehicle a decent amount easier. Uh, because this is a crossover vehicle, step in height is going to be considerably lower than something like a Lexus GX, which in a manner of uh, ways actually competes with the Acura MDX because that's the cheapest Lexus three row SUV. The Lexus RX is only two rows. so. The Lexus RX doesn't necessarily compete with the MDX that directly unless you're not planning on using this third row seat in the MDX. Now before we go to the rear, let's adjust the front seat for a comfortable position, allowing for a little bit more room in the back as you would normally expect if you had people in the back and you stuffed people up front. I'm six feet tall, my feet are on the floorboards, flat on the floor, and I have about uh, two and a half inches of room between this glove box and my knees. Now let's move into the back. Moving back to the second row, I now have a rearward facing child seat installed. This is a convertible child seat. This again, as I said earlier, is the Grocco Classic Ride 50 child seat. As you can see between the front seat and this child seat, I have about an inch and a half to two inches of room, which is ideal because in a rear end style accident, you can have some front seat motion. So you do wanna make sure that there's an acceptable amount of room between the child seat and the front seat. Now the second row is positioned all the way back in its tracks. It does move forward and backward. So depending on how tall of a person you're jamming up front, you could move the seat a little bit further forward. This is a good time to talk about the third row. If we take a look at this situation right here, you can see that my knee doesn't really fit behind this second row seat if the second row seat is adjusted for this rearward facing child seat. Now, if I were to sit in the second row seat and adjust it so that way I had about two inches of knee clearance between that front seat and the second row seat, then I would have enough leg room to sit behind myself in the front seat, in the second row seat, and in the third row seat. However, headroom is pretty limited back here. If I actually put my back to the seat back here, I can't sit upright in this car. I do have to cock my head to one side. So this third row should really be considered the third row for children uh, or smaller adults or perhaps your mother-in-law. Now, while I'm back here, if you've ever wondered why top tether anchors are so long on child seats, that's because in vehicles like this MDX, the top tether anchor is all the way at the bottom of the second row seat back. So you do have to reach all the way down there and clip it on. That means these tethers do have to be fairly long to support a wide variety of vehicles. Acura makes getting in and out of the third row fairly easy. We actually have an electric recline button right there. Press the button, the seat slides forward automatically. We have another release button right here to help the third row passengers get out of the vehicle as well. Now, if you just want to fold the seats flat or adjust the recline angle, that's this lever right here. And if we pull that, this second row does fold almost completely flat. As with almost every other three row crossover out there, inserting a child seat right here in the second row that's forward facing, and then trying to get in the third row is a little bit tricky. And here's the reason, because we can slide the seat all the way forward, and there's not enough room really here to get in the third row. Now, if you press the recline button or this release button that's right over here, the thing does not fold forward, and that's because this child seat is in the way, preventing the seat from actually moving. This means that if you do plan on using two child seats and you still want access to the third row, you're gonna need to squeeze both child seats over there on the 60 portion of the seat and get relatively narrow child seats because you're gonna need to squeeze that middle child seat right there on that 60 portion of the seat back. Now, this is very different than something like the Infiniti QX60 and the Nissan Pathfinder because to my knowledge, those are the only SUVs or crossovers out there that are three rows and that also allow you to move this seat forward with a child seat attached and get in the third row. They do that with a rather interesting mechanism and this whole seat back actually sort of tumbles forward and right here into the front seat so that way you can actually get in the back. If you have two child seats and you still need access to that third row, you could put them over here on this 60 portion of the 60-40 folding second row seat back. Now, I think in reality, this is more of a 70-30 rear seat back instead of a 60-40 arrangement like you'd find in some of those vehicles out there. And the reason for that is because this actually has enough room for two child seats to sit side by side and have this 40 portion actually tilt and slide forward. Now, if you recall in my recent video of the Infiniti QX60, you couldn't do that because that 60 portion is just a little bit too small and this other portion was a little bit too wide and it just hit this child seat. So it wouldn't actually move if there were two child seats over there. Uh, but as we can see in the MDX, 
there is enough room with those two seats right there for me to push this button, have the seat slide forward, and then I can climb right here into the back. If you need to put three child seats in the back and still use the other four seats in the MDX, then you can put one right back here in the third row, and then these two child seats right here in the 60 portion of the second row, and you can still get in and out of the third row relatively easily thanks to the design of the second row seat. One thing to keep in mind in this configuration is that this seat right here in the third row doesn't have latch anchors to attach it firmly to the seat back, so you will have to use the shoulder belt for that seat right there. Speaking of seat belts, the MDX does use a ceiling mount seat belt for this center second row seat back. I do find that a little bit less convenient than the seat belt arrangement that's integrated right here into the seat. I find that a decent amount more convenient than this one dangling from the ceiling. It definitely makes it easier to get in and out of the third row or fold the seats flat if you have this seat belt connected. So if you are regularly using the second row for an adult, then that could be a problem. However, it's not really a problem for child seats. The reason that ceiling mounted shoulder belt isn't a problem in the MDX is because we actually have a dedicated latch anchor for the center position in the MDX. That's very unusual because this is not required by law and as a result, there really are very few vehicles that have three sets of latch anchors. We still have outboard latch anchors right here in the outboard seats. They're very well hidden in the seat bottom cushion, but we also have these center mounted latch anchors right here, as well as a top tether anchor for the center seat. And that makes it very easy to install these two child seats right over here on the 60 portion of the seat back. Now overall, there's a little bit less room back here than in the Finity QX60, but if you do plan on using three child seats across your second row, they're gonna be more secure in the MDX than they will be in any of these other three row options because of this third set of latch anchors right here in the back. Latch anchors are the preferred method of attaching a child seat to a vehicle because there's a lot less movement between the vehicle and the child seat in the event of an accident. Of course, if you do have three child seats right here in the second row, you can pretty much give up getting into the third row without removing one of the child seats, and that could be a pain. It's now time to talk cargo room, so let's look behind this large hatch right here. We do have a power hatch in the MDX, which does make getting in and out relatively easy. Right back here, we actually have a decent amount more storage space than you'll find in some of the smaller three-row options out there. So I was able to fit more luggage back here than in something like a Toyota Highlander, which is still a little bit smaller than the MDX. That's a 24-inch roller bag. This is a 26-inch roller bag, and you can stick them side by side right there if you lift up this little hatch right here and drop them into the cargo well. Now, in case you're wondering, if I lift up this divider, you find the jack inserted right there under the third row seat. We also have a tow hook and the little dealy with which you remove the spare tire from the vehicle. It is held captive underneath the MDX. It's not actually in the cargo compartment, although you do release it using a little knob right there inside the car. Also, while we're back here, a good thing to note is that we do have top tether anchors for these third row seat positions, although we don't have latch anchors, as I said earlier. So you can attach the top tether to a child seat in this third row, but it's not going to be as secure as the second row, which does have full latch anchors for all three seat positions. Now, obviously, we could fit a decent number of child seats in the MDX if this third row was folded, but let's see how many we can fit back here with the third row in place. Yeah, the answer is one child seat. If you perhaps had a slightly smaller child seat than this Garaco Classic Ride 50 child seat, you might be able to fit two back there. Again, this is relatively average. It's right about in the middle of the spectrum in terms of overall size, and it was tricky to fit more than one right back here in the rear. Again, if you do fold the third row flat, you can fit a ton of stuff in the MDX. If you just fold one side of that third row down, you could fit three child seats back in there and the 26 and 24 inch roller bag very easily. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. I'm Alex Dykes, and this has been the 2015 Acura MDX three-row crossover. Go ahead and click that subscribe banner at the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of my latest videos, including the full video review of the 2015 MDX coming up in about a day or so. You can also find other child seat videos on my channel, including the 2014 and 2015 BMW X5 and the Infiniti QX63 row crossovers, obviously very direct competitors to this MDX. You can also find me over at facebook.com slash alexandautos. You can email your questions to alex at alexandautos.com, and I'll see you next week.